With Fontaine's release, we're more than halfway done with Teyvat's story. Hopefully, this means we're one step closer in finding our sibling and even closer to a potential Danes of Banner. But before we wade into the far future, here's everything we know so far about Teyvat's fifth region, Fontaine. I'm your leafy lord Shira Minzaf, and I read the Genshin Impact lore so you don't have to. Please keep in mind that this is a leak-free zone, so any and all information included in this video is either confirmed by Hoyoverse or speculative in nature. No leaks, only drip. Fontaine prides itself as Teyvat's center of cultural, artistic, technological innovation and fashion. It's a country that reveres true beauty and elegance, and we've seen some very opulent displays of architecture and clothing in recent trailers. According to Francis, some people from other countries may find Fontaine's dress sense showy and impractical, but for them, there's nothing more commonplace. Kirara actually teased a possible character coming to Fontaine, and her name is Tiori, a famous fashion designer from Inazuma who runs her own store in Fontaine. Fontaine society is divided into the affluent court of Fontaine and the underground which lives in poverty, the latter of which being the rejects of society presumably as a result of their guilty verdicts. The Steambird is a Teyvat newspaper that originated from Fontaine. Mona is one of the earliest columnists that we've been introduced to in her writing of all things astrological and her manuscript on celestial shifts and their relation to a person's changing fates were very popular among readers. Traveler actually made headlines after the Steambird reported on their fight against Zavalin, the popularity of which lasted for three weeks and had sales up to record numbers. Front page, full-length expert interviews, it had allegedly the best hand-drawn illustrations Mora could buy. The Steambird also reported on the battle between Kaidahara Kazuha and the Raiden Shogun, which had Kaidahara Kazuha trending for blocking the famous Muso no Hitotachi. Teyvat Food Notes is a series of Steambird blog posts that you can actually interact with IRL on the official Chinese Genshin Impact website. The blog posts are written from the point of view of Ryuji-kun, a rendition of Aether and shares real-life recipes for in-game foods and drinks, sometimes unreleased. Other Steambird staff include Charlotte and Gaston, an NPC looking to interview Dory for being the owner of the Palace of Alcazarzare. Rock and Roll also originated from Fontaine according to Jin Yan, and the Iridescence tour which we helped in the previous Lantern Rite was also started in Fontaine. There also seems to be a secret fight club for champion duelists, and the clockwork toy shop owner is planning to make champion duelist toys big in Fontaine. In present day Fontaine, Liban warns that dark clouds seem to be gathering over the nation. Things feel oppressive and dangerous, and Fontaine locals are antsy as though judgment is soon to come. So not only does Fontaine have the threat of something cataclysmic happening, Fontaine also has an energy problem. It also has a waterline crisis. Speaking of waterline crisis, with underwater exploration being implemented and Fontaine being the nation of Hydro, it's safe to assume that there'd be expanses of water in the new region. Travelers might be expected to tread the waters by obtaining a diving certificate. But why swim if you can teleport? In the developer's discussion, travelers can unlock a teleport waypoint in the realm of Farakert in Sumeru that's close to Fontaine. Xiaoying Village is an unreleased area in Biyue, which borders Fontaine. This means the Hydro Nation might sit north of Sumeru and northwest of Liyue. So right here, approximately. This would make the most sense since there are three harbors that connect Sumeru and Liyue to Fontaine. Lumidu's Harbor, which leads to Chenyu Vale, and Romaritime Harbor, which routes to the Sumeru Deserts. Beta Harbor is a harbor in Sumeru which is located directly across Fontaine. In order to travel from place to place in Fontaine, one can use the aqua rails. According to Augustus Lovelace, aqua rails are a special transportation system which uses vehicles called aqua buses. Not only are they fast and convenient, but they even have melusine guides on board who provide commentary on the scenery. Here are some locations and points of interest that we'll probably encounter in Fontaine. Plu of Sandra, mentioned by Cleese mother Alice, translates to Ash River in French and a fleuve is a river that flows into a sea, desert, or lake. This could be a body of water heavily patrolled by the Melusine. The Melusine originally hail from a secluded village and are said to be born with powerful sight that enables them to see things that humans can't. Their ability to perceive traces of bad guys is precisely why most employees of the Marichusse Phantom are the Melusines. The Court of Fontaine seems to be the nation's main city, with it and Erinese being two opulent regions. 
Opera Piglisse is within the Court of Fontaine and is the area where court trials are held. Looney and Lynette regularly perform their magic shows in Hotel de Borde, where the owner often invites artists to perform at the restaurant. The Fortress of Meropity is allegedly a prison in Fontaine first mentioned in Jan Fay's birthday letter. The Fountain of Lucine might be this fountain featured in Fontaine's first trailer since according to René's investigation notes, it is recognized for the coins at the bottom. There's also what appears to be the remains of another massive beast, much like Orobashi in Inazuma and Durin in Dragonspine. The skeletal remains are reminiscent of a giant tortoise, one that was seen in Nahiro's demo trailer and mentioned in the Fading Twilight lore. There's another area which seems to be ruins from one of Fontaine's previous floods, peep that giant oceanid. Petrichor is a town that is the site of a majestic waterfall. This waterfall serves as the town's main tourist attraction, and the waters are said to be surpassingly pure. It also serves as the hometown of Fontaine researcher and filmmaker Xavier, and the meeting place of the Daydream Club. Fontaine has an incredible repertoire of technological developments. According to Felix Yoga, Daydream Club is comprised of inventors that pursue their daydreams. Mikanta and Babis are brothers in this Daydream Club that are working on a super-sized cannon that can fire missiles into the stars of Tevat, all while carrying people inside. Yes, a rocket. They are, however, still searching for the right fuel for their ambitious project. We've also seen glimpses of automatons in recent trailers. There are also speculations that Fleminette, the younger brother of Linny and Lynette, is an automaton due to his ability to converse with a vacuum cleaner. The Fontaine Research Institute of Kinetic Engineering is the hub of the country's technological prowess. Clockwork mechanisms and kinetic cores were created by the Institute's founder, Alain Guillotin. And according to Augustus Lovelace, the Institute was considered a paradise for researchers until disaster struck. Remember that Fontaine has a waterline crisis? A senior technician named Edwin Eastinghouse conducted an experiment using something called Archeum in an attempt to resolve Fontaine's waterline crisis. This, however, caused a massive explosion which destroyed most of the Fontaine Research Institute. Edwin Eastinghouse is presumed dead and the reconstruction of the institute is being helmed by Raimondo and Choiseul, an institutional reorganization that Augustus doesn't seem to be too happy about. According to the explosive toy maker Bertrand, Fontaine has a very special energy system, but no one knows how long it can be sustained. Alain Guillotin, the institute's founder, invented energy blocks providing power via controlled Numa Usia annihilation reactions over 400 years ago. Numa and Usia are part of a new combat mechanism called ARC. Numa and Usia are opposing energy forces, and when they collide, they create a reaction called annihilation. There are Numa aligned characters and Usia aligned characters, and they are recognizable by their vision shapes. This technology is the basis of most of Fontaine's clockwork mecha today. Fontaine's main energy source is called Edemnitium, and it is generated during the process of judgment. A machine called the Oratrice harvests people's belief in justice and converts it into energy. However, this energy source has been on the decline, and researchers from the Institute have been scrambling to find alternative energy solutions before the entire system comes crashing down. To clarify, the Clockwork Mecha and the Fontaine Combat System use Numa Usia Energy. The city of Fontaine is powered by Edemnitium. In the Vibro Crystal Research event, we meet Patrice, a Fontaine researcher studying the potential of using elemental power as an energy source, the conduits for such elemental power being the Vibro Crystals. Patrice states that independent researchers must apply for funding to conduct their studies, but using them means that you'll be assuming the social responsibility that comes with their use. To spend large sums and not produce any results, therefore, makes you no different from a criminal deserving of judgment. If Patrice were to return empty-handed, he would most certainly face at least a few dozen charges, and such crimes would surely land him the harshest punishments if he is judged. Patrice ends his rant by saying, as long as you are not considered guilty, you can enjoy all manner of conveniences. We people of Fontaine have all benefited from that system in the past. This might suggest that the Institute facilitates and funds the nation's researchers and engineers, and deploys these strict rules regarding the use of resources, presumably to avoid potential con artists. Those who fail to yield results or explanations are punished. The Fontaine Research Institute's ability to provide funding for researchers who apply for funding already seems to function more inclusively than Sumeru Academia, 
where research can only be conducted by academia members. Technological inventions seem to be the primary source of the nation's income. Oh, and for those of you wanting to know, Patrice was actually able to successfully complete his research on vibrocrystals, but due to his methods of achieving his results being illegal to the court of Fontaine, he is currently under public scrutiny and his friend Anatole was sent to verify his test results in the vibrocrystal verification event. Here are some notable inventions from Fontaine. The camera. Yes, the camera you use is actually an invention from Fontaine, or rather it was redeveloped in Fontaine. Cameras actually existed pre-cataclysm and the memento lens was once part of a special camera that was used by the Hiragi clan as a tool for exorcisms. The Hiragis would have a special camera made to order from overseas with that catalyst mounted on its lens assembly. That camera was said to have been able to record thoughts and memories. And though the complicated components may have rusted away over time, the specially made lens can still see that which does not exist in the present world. It's unclear whether or not the Hiragi camera came from Fontaine, or if Fontaine reworked ancient technology. But cameras seem to have been recently imported to Liyue and other nations in Tevat just prior to the start of Traveler's Journey. The Mikage Furnace The Mikage Furnace in Tatarasuna was designed by Fontaine engineers and was the largest smelting facility in all of Inazuma. It was used to forge military weapons using a material called jade steel. This practice was heavily frowned upon by the Sangonumiya clan as jade steel was produced from crystal marrow, a remnant of their deceased god Orobashi. Some would say this act is unjust. Speaking of unjust, the court of Fontaine is the home of the god of justice, the current Hydra Archon Fossilors, with Nuvilet appointed as her chief justice. The court operates on a judicial system, and according to Yan Fei, Fontaine's law is notoriously complicated. Bertrand states that for some people, Fontaine is a most convenient place to live, but for others, it is not but a place of grief and disappointment. NPC dialogue seems to indicate that if you comply with Fontaine's laws, life should be comfortable and easy, and failing to abide by said laws could land you the harshest of punishments on top of being ostracized. Aside from humans and humanoids, Fontaine is also home to races such as the Lock Folk and the Melusine, the latter of which seem to make up Fontaine's police force, the Marechusse Phantoms. The Marechusse Phantom is a special detective force that reports directly to the Eudex, the Chief Justice. There is a persistent need to maintain control in Fontaine, meaning people are to cooperate with Fontaine's strict laws under the watchful gaze of the court and the Melusine and a need to control the spread of information. The Steambird, the main newspaper of Fontaine, is overseen by the court, meaning gets to vet what information can and can't be published, and most importantly, how it's published. Aside from its dystopian nature, the court of Fontaine is also apparently known for its beautiful women. More than a thousand years ago, there was a harpist from the magnificent and enchanting land of Fontaine. He had left to travel the world in search of his true destiny, it is said that all the ladies of the court of Fontaine wailed with grief when they heard the tragic news that he had left without saying goodbye. This harpist would later join the famous Wanderer's Troop, and the tragedy of the Wanderer's Troop is a topic I'll cover for another day. All trials conducted in the court of Fontaine is overseen by Nouvellet, with Fossilor making herself present at almost every trial, seemingly because she just enjoys the spectacle. As the Archon, she does concerningly reserve the right to influence the final verdict. Nahida states that Fossilor has an interesting personality, while Nurlet claims that Fossilor is prone to tantrums. This paints a very juvenile and pretentious portrayal of the current Hydra Archon. This behavior seems to be confirmed by her own words in the Varunada Lazarite gemstone, as all Ascension gemstones contain lines spoken by their respective elements Archons. However, Dainsliff does say, The god of justice lives for the spectacle of the courtroom, seeking to judge all other gods. But even she knows not to make an enemy of the divine. An indication that Fossilor perhaps fears Celestia. This doesn't help that according to some triangulation theorists, Celestia might be situated right on top of Fontaine. Fossilor is also not one of the original seven Archons. The previous Hydra Archon was the Lord of Amrita, also known as the Lord of the Sweet Dew. 
The Lock Folk were her dutiful spies sent across the waters of Tevat to connect the people of the world together. The Lord of Amgitha was one of the Archons called to Tunigi Hollow to combat the Abyss, but was slain. Her body was turned into pure dew from which the previous Dendro Archon, Greater Lord Rukidavata, grew a massive tree called the Harvest Takum to keep Lord Amrita's conscience alive in the mortal realm. The Harvest Takum has kept Abyssal forces trapped for years. After Lord Amrita's death, Fosalar came to power as the new Hydro Archon, a development that was vehemently rejected by the Lock Folk. Several Lock Folk fled to the whereabouts of the Lord of Amrita, only to be heartbroken at the sight of what was left of their beloved Archon. Idea also cites the reason for the Lock Folk leaving as the waters. The waters of Fontaine changed into the Oceanids, now the waters there are full of pain and hatred. For us, if we wanted to live, fleeing was the best choice. Lockfolk or Oceanids are beings born of water's essence. According to the Dew of Repudiation, water contains memories and willpower, and that these things can grow in bodies of water meld together. This could be how Lockfolk are born or achieve sentience. Due to their life force being so directly linked to water, the Lockfolk can actually change bodies of water. For example, when Rodea's rage turned the waters bitter, threatening to destroy Mondstadt's water supply. And alternatively, water can affect the health of the Lock Folk. There are several things that are still unclear about Fontaine's water and why it's become so toxic. Is the pollution due to Fontaine's industrialization? According to Santon, in contrast to the fresh nature of Sumeru, the air of Fontaine is toxic fumes. Is Fosalor a being similar to the Lock Folk in that pain and hatred in her own heart has polluted the waters of Fontaine? Or is the toxicity caused by any abyssal influence? And of course, we can't talk about abyssal influence without talking about the Fontaine Archon Quest. If you remember the Grand Thief from the We Will Be Reunited Archon Quest, he was allegedly a highly respected treasure hoarder from Fontaine. He was selected to divert the Abyss Order forces from the ruins in Li Yue. He was, instead, turned into an involuntary sacrifice, as the quest title suggests. One of the Archon quests we'll encounter is Masquerade of the Guilty, and according to Alice and Yanfei, both suggest a possible theme of being put on trial, Ace Attorney style. We're told of a prophecy spreading in Fontaine. The people will all be dissolved into the waters, and only the Hydro Archon will remain weeping on her throne. This prophecy could be the reason why the people of Fontaine are uneasy and feel as though judgment is soon to come. The origin of this prophecy could come from a witch of the Hexen Circle, with members such as Master Hydromancer Barbaloth, Mona, and the prophetess Nicole gifted with this ability. Fontaine seems to have dealt with a massive flood in the past, not once, but twice, as stated in René's investigation notes, and in the description for the new overworld boss, the Emperor of Fire and Iron, who was said to have witnessed the seas of Fontaine before the first Diluvian or Flood period. The prophecy spreading in Fontaine could allude to the threat of a third Flood happening very soon. To make matters worse, this Flood seems to have been a worldwide event for all of Tevat. According to Alice, Dre Yun Kars and Li Yue should be underwater. In the World Quest Paleontological Investigation in the Chasm, an academia scholar named Kedive tells us that there's a saying in Li Yue that goes, Forests and fields are eventually engulfed by the vast ocean. A statement that seems to be in the form of a prophecy. The descriptions of the Violet Court and Court of Flowing Sand all attest to this flood affecting Inazuma as well, with Inazuma being left with fewer islands because of it. These floods could be the reason behind the ruins we see underwater in various areas. Not to mention the ancient records of Before Sun and Moon, a historical collection of Tevat's earliest history from thousands of years ago, is full of biblical flood imagery. There's an interesting concept of dissolving into water. I wonder how long before the rest of the world becomes part of this underwater museum too. The water is gradually swallowing our memories. It won't be long before it swallows us. Could the water of Fontaine be toxic due to people and their memories quite literally dissolving into water? Could it be why Idea states that the waters are now full of pain and hatred? Or is the pain and hatred a reflection of what truly lies in Farina's heart, making her an incredibly multifaceted character? In the Archon Quest, we might be dealing with a court case whose penalty is a death sentence. 
something that Tartaglia will interfere in and surprisingly, he is without his Hydra vision. Justice is served in the opera Epiclis. And what do the court and opera have in common? There are sides trying to convince you of their act. Their lies. Between the Melusine watching our every move and the possible threat of Celestia Skyfrost nailing Fontaine, there's also the nefarious Fatui Harbinger, Arlecchino, to watch out for. Arlecchino founded an orphanage called the House of Hearth, and children from the House of Hearth are raised to become members of the Fatui and consider each other family. Arlecchino's Fatui moniker means the Harlequin, and in the Commedia dell'arte is a character that acts to thwart the plans of their master. This description matches Wander's and Tartaglia's voice lines describing her as unhinged and willing to betray her superiors for her own ulterior motives. This is an emblem containing all the constellations of the Fatui Harbingers. In this constellation of a hand holding a candle is speculated to be Arlequinos, which is a symbol called the Hand of Glory, originating from an old European form of punishment where a murderer's hand would be amputated and dried while holding a candle. This could be foreshadowing a crime Arlequino might commit in the Fontaine Archon quest, or it could hint towards a possible crime committed in her past, which isn't so far-fetched since villain and homicidal are kind of synonymous with one another. Does this also mean that Linny and Lynette are working for the Fatui as children raised from Arlequino's orphanage? Not necessarily, but Lynette's name might be a hint towards the possible involvement they'll have with Arlequina. In the Arthurian legends, Lynette is a noble lady who travels to King Arthur's court to seek help in rescuing her sister Leonis from the Red Knight, also named Sir Ironside. Later on, although Sir Ironside demonstrated a cruel and sadistic nature, he was still brought to Arthur's court as a Knight of the Round Table. A hint to a redemption arc for Arlequina after her possibly betraying the Fatui? If the Fatui is after the Hydronosis, then the best place to look would be the Oratress. Once again, the Oratress is a machine that harvests people's belief in justice and converts it into Fontaine's main source of energy, an energy source that seems to be dwindling. Each Archon presides over their own part of Tevat, and each Archon seems to have a duty and a way in which they draw power, presumably from their Gnosis. The Animo Archon has a duty to rule over Mondstadt to attain power, a role he willingly relinquishes to the people in exchange for freedom. According to Nahida, the Dendro Archon's power is derived from the people's faith, power Nahida initially lacked due to her not being as loved as Greater Lord Rukitavata. So, it might follow that the Hydra Archon's power is derived from people's belief in justice, and the Hydronosis might very well be what's powering the Oratress. According to the 4.0 livestream trailer, Linny, Lynette, and Fleminette are investigating how exactly the Oratress operates and why it's actually conscious. Sentient. The accident in their show could be a ruse to uncover Fontaine's secrets, and the person instigating their plans could very well be Arlequino. It's important to note that although Genshin draws inspiration from a plethora of literary and musical works from all over the world, it might not necessarily translate directly into Genshin's writing. However, it could be a good indicator of approximately where the story might be heading. Speaking of literary references, 4.0 will be introducing one of my favorite bosses in the game so far, Coppelius and Coppelia who are named after characters from a comic ballet where a doctor named Coppelius makes a life-size dancing doll named Coppelia. Coppelia is so lifelike that a village youth named Franz falls in love with her, discarding his true love for another woman named Swanhilda. Dr. Coppelius wants to bring his doll Coppelia to life and requires a human sacrifice from which he conveniently selects Franz. Franz is later saved by his original love Swanhilda when she dresses in Coppelia's clothes to fool the doctor into thinking his robot has come to life. Coppelia's story is very much in line with Fontaine's overarching theme of deception. With Fontaine's release, we are more than halfway done with Teyvat's story. If you enjoyed this video, please leave a like and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next video. I'm your leafy lord Shiri Menzif, and I read the Genshin Impact lore so that you don't have to.